Nicole from Engadget and here at the Research at Intel event talking to, uh, what's your name, Paul Crawford? That's correct, yep. And what do you do for Intel? I'm a senior research scientist in their interaction and experience research lab. I'm interested in understanding people, what's going on with them, so that we can use that information to make their device interactions better. Thank you. Um, so what are you showing here today? We have a demonstration of what we're calling Be Understood. In this case, we're applying it to the, a driving environment. We're all interested in distracted driving. Or there's a, certainly there's a high degree of interest in that. People who are texting while driving are causing problems on the roadways. And there's a couple of different pieces of distraction. One is visual distraction, which is sort of self-evident. If you're not looking at the road, that's a bad thing. And there's tools out there today that people are using to sort of measure that scientifically. Uh, and I think there's even, it's not too far in the future where that'll maybe even work its way into the car. You know, eye tracking, essentially. Where are your eyes looking? That technology is relatively mature and I think its, its application is just around the corner. So we're using that technology similarly to measure when, in, when you're looking at the road versus off the road and we can build metrics around your distraction from a visual perspective. The other more novel piece of information that we're using is what we call, uh, we're using a device called a functional near-infrared spectrometer. It measures cognitive workload, or how hard your brain is working at processing information. And with that information, we can paint a picture of essentially the tasks that you're dealing with mentally and how challenging they are to you. So what we're able to do is, with this functional near-infrared spectrometer, we can put it on somebody's forehead, sample essentially the metabolic activity in their brain, and with that information say, uh, these sets of conditions elicit this sort of degree of complexity in the workload, these sorts of conditions elicit this sort of uh, complexity in workload, and when you make a contrast between the two, you can figure out, okay, this is more, this is more demanding cognitively than this task, and with that information we can hopefully control the task or the environment that suits the driver and where they're at. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to introduce you to a couple different uh, displays that we have going on here. Uh, obviously Marvin here is driving a, uh, a racing game and we're going, to, we're going to talk about what we call our Sunday drive state and then our uh, you know, high speed you know, frantic commute commute uh, state, and we'll be able to, to paint a picture of the differences visually or mentally, how they're distracted during those two different conditions. This display here is showing our, uh, uh, our visual distraction information. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is, the, this is a, a real-time feed of, of Marvin's eyes, and it's using uh, reflections and the geometry of the cameras and the light emitters and the reflections off of them to, to be able to track his eyes in real time. These green lines here are basically where his eyes are looking. The center channel is basically the center monitor. And anytime he comes off that channel over here, you can see that if you look to the right, you can see that, right? It's just it's picking those things up. And this is sort of our real-time measure of distraction. This is a timer. It goes off anytime his eyes come off that center screen. The thing starts keeping track of how long he's off of off the center channel. One second, two second, three seconds. So Marvin, if you look over here, timer starts one second, two second, three seconds. Okay, go back to the center screen, it resets. And this looks at the last 20 glances away. Uh, the more often he's looking away for more than two seconds, the lower this score gets. Now this is our brain activity sensing display. But it's going to paint a picture of brain activity as a function of these different driving states. All right, so. This is our functional near-infrared spectrometer. It basically has four LEDs here that are putting off a near-infrared light that's used to help us measure the metabolic activity in the brain. These are light detectors. This information will allow us to, to understand what's going on in his brain. So we're going to fix this to Marvin's forehead. Brain activity. All right, so now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to put Marvin in a couple of different driving states. First one's the Sunday drive, real simple driving conditions, uh, low speed on a Formula in a Formula One race car, but not not particularly challenging. All right, you ready, Marvin? Okay, let's go. Put a marker in the file there. We're collecting data now at this very simple driving condition. Now we're going to jump him in uh, to a driving state where it's full speed ahead, Marvin. Handle all the curves as best you can. We may fire other questions at them and mentally stimulate them, just mentally distract them, you know, alphabet, math problems, all kinds of things that just hopefully will elicit that and we'll get a picture of what his brain looks like under these two different conditions. Marvin, tell us, uh, tell us the signs you're seeing, tell us the speed you're going. My gear is on four, driving at 140 miles per hour. Uh, I see a banner, DHL, Alliance, Marvin, can you count backwards from 100 by sevens? Sure. Um, 
93, um, uh, 85, uh, 78. Let's process this data and see what we get. If you look at, uh, this is the, the, the brain, the picture of the brain and the hot spots and the brain in the, in the really, in the Sunday drive. As you can see, we could change the scale here and show some areas where there was some uh, levels of activity, but, but based on this scale, it's basically a very simple presentation of the fact that he's not asking a lot of his brain when he's doing the Sunday drive. In contrast, so these are in the same scales. When you look at the, at the high, uh, high, high driving uh, speeds, you clearly see a lot more of his brain light up. This is the sort of information we can use to say, you know, obviously this, these are two extremes in driving, but they allow us to paint the picture of the fact that we have insights into how much uh, brain is being recruited to handle these sorts of information, these sorts of task loads. And as you get a handle on that, you can use that to sort of change the environmental conditions, the tasks that you're getting to sort of hopefully tune it, optimize it, make it so that you're uh, a better performing uh, whatever you are, operator, driver, flyer, passenger, air traffic controller, all this information can come together to help us uh, put you at your best.